Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Tech, and with the iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max, of course we gained some new features and functionality, so I thought we'd go over some settings that you need to know, or that you may want to change depending on how you want to use the phone. Now the first thing is the new action button. The new action button of course allows us to customize what we want to do with it. You do this during setup, and if you want to silence your phone, it's in the control center here now under this little icon. So if you want to just leave it on silent, like I typically did with the silent switch before, you can do that. But if we go into settings and scroll down to the action button, under the action button we have a ton of different functionality that you may or may not be aware of. Of course we have your regular modes such as silent, focus modes that we can change to whatever we want. Of course we have different camera modes. That's typically what I use. Just have it go right into video. When I open it up, we also of course have the flashlight voice memo as well as magnifier shortcuts. I'll show you that in a moment and accessibility. Accessibility is really helpful, especially if you're an accessibility user to maybe just jump right into detection mode go down to reduce motion. If something's making you maybe a little nauseous or it's maybe difficult just to tap on something or zoom or more. However, if you go into shortcuts, there's a ton of functionality here. You can choose a shortcut or you can have it just bring up a ton of different shortcuts. So maybe we want to show a folder and we want to show all of our shortcuts. Now, if I press and hold, we can see our shortcuts at the top or open an app. These are all of the just general ones that we have at the top of our shortcut app. So if I want to browse top news, calculate a tip quickly, we can just go right in and say the bill is $125 tap done. And it says, how much would you like to tip 20%? And it tells you how much money that is super simple and very customizable, especially if you have shortcuts set up to do that. So whatever you have at the top will show up as soon as you press and hold the button. So I would recommend setting it up that way and customizing this maybe based on a shortcut that works for you or an accessibility setting. It's a much more powerful tool that way. And there's even some more advanced tips where you can actually have it set up to customize based on the orientation of your phone that actually takes quite a while to set up and get it to work properly. Now with the iPhone 14 pro and 14 pro max, as well as the iPhone 15 models, we have a boot up sound. You may have forgot about this or not been aware, but if we go into our iPhone here, we'll unlock this one. And if I turn this off or turn it on, we now have a boot up sound. So let me turn this off. I'll turn the volume up here, press volume up, volume down, press and hold the power sleep wake button and slide to power off. And that's the power down sound. We'll give it a moment and I'll power it back on. So let's go ahead and turn it back on, press and hold the power sleep wake button. And then we have the boot up sound. So if you want to enable that, all you need to do is go onto your iPhone, go to settings. We'll go back out of our new action button settings. We'll scroll down to accessibility under accessibility, scroll down to where it says audio slash visual and under audio visual, you have power on and off sounds. Just turn on the switch. If you want to have that, it's helpful, not only for accessibility, but it sort of brings back maybe memories of a Mac when it boots up or not. It's specific to the iPhone 14 and 15 models. On the iPhone 15 series phones, we have some new battery options. One of them you may want to enable, but if you go into your settings, go to general and under general tap on about and down at the bottom, we have our cycle count. The cycle count actually lets us know how much longer we have in the battery. Apple actually designed the battery to have 500 total cycles and have 80% of the battery health left. So that's just a super helpful way to know without actually going into different settings or using a third party app. It's not super important, but something that's great to have. Also something I would consider changing is if we go into the battery settings themselves under battery, battery health and charging, we now have a new option under charging optimization. Under charging optimization, we can leave it alone, let it manage itself or put it at an 80% limit, which typically is a little bit better over time. Maybe it'll save you three to 5% over the period of a year or so. If it charges to 80% and then stops charging between about 10 or 20% and 80% is optimal for most lithium ion batteries. You'll see that with EVs as well as phones and more. So if you want to set that up that way, to make sure you get this really long use out of the battery itself, you may want to consider switching it. I personally use my phones for one to two years, so I'll leave it on optimized battery charging and let Apple handle it itself. 
With the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max, Apple has really upgraded the cameras again with specific features. Now there's some settings that help you take better advantage of this, save some space and more. First, we'll start off by going into our settings, scrolling down to camera and go through that. If we go into camera, go under record video at the top, I would recommend switching it to the higher quality 4k at whatever frame rate you prefer. I typically record at 4k 30, but you can change this to whatever you'd like. I wouldn't really use 1080p as you want the best quality for those memories that you capture. As we scroll down, another setting you might want to turn off is HDR video. Now I personally like HDR video, but if you're posting online a lot, it may take extra time to process and it's super bright and not everyone can see it. This is going to be very dependent on how you use your phone though. I actually like it quite a bit, but if you don't make sure you turn that off. Additionally, at the bottom, there's a new option that was added with iOS 17 lock white balance. I would recommend turning this on. So the white balance doesn't shift. What that means is maybe this white background we have here, if you're recording video and maybe you bring a screen in front of it, sometimes it can sort of give a yellow color to it. If you don't want it to change at all and just keep the color that you're seeing, turn that on. And when you're recording video in the camera, it won't change at all. Once you hit record, that's something I use specifically with this camera all the time. Now, Back in our settings, if we go back one more, you'll see we have formats. Under formats, there's some new options for the 15 models. If we scroll down, you've got Pro Raw and Resolution Control. I would recommend turning that on if you want the very best quality available. You don't have to use it all the time, but if we go into Pro Default, we have some new options here with different formats. We have HEIF or HEIF, which is the most compression. They'll save file sizes and you can see those here. You can do up to 48 megapixels or pro raw max up to 48 megapixels. If you want the very best quality, put it on pro raw max, but it will take up more space, 75 megabytes for one photo at 48 megapixels. But if you want to save space, put on the new format HEIF and you'll see 75 megabytes for pro raw or five megabytes for HEIF for the same 48 megapixel image. So you'll save a ton of storage. And if that's most important to you, enable that either way, you can have that option here. Additionally, if we go down in our video capture, we have ProRes. We had this before, but now we have a couple new options. Under ProRes recording, at the top here, we have HDR, SDR, which is normal video recording, or log. Log is where you want to color grade this. So if you're planning to put this in an editor later on and color grade the image, put it to log. If not, turn it off entirely to SDR or just HDR, depending on if you want to use ProRes. ProRes are huge files, so most people will probably won't want to use that. However, if you do, you'll know what that is and you'll want to enable that. Now, before we jump into the camera app, a couple things under the main settings page, scroll down to the bottom and I would recommend enabling grid that helps you center photos a little bit better. And there's now a level that was added with iOS 17. I would turn those on if you plan to use those. And then there's a couple here as well. You can mirror the front camera or view outside the frame. Those are a little bit older within the camera app. If we go under photos, we have some new options. Let me rotate this here and under one X, if we tap it again, we have the equivalent of 1.2 X or 28 millimeters, tap it again, 35 millimeters or 1.5 times or 24 millimeters at one times. If you want to change this so it never shows up again and you don't want to see this, it's not actually zooming. It's actually giving you the representation of what one of those lenses would actually do. If we go back into our camera settings at the very bottom, almost toward the bottom here, you'll have main camera. You can actually turn that feature off with the additional lenses. I would leave them on as you can use them and just not tap them. And then you can set which one you want as default. Many people like the different focal lengths and the look of it. So you could try this out, play around with them and see what works for you. I like having all the options there. So I just leave it enabled. Additionally, in the photo app, if you take a lot of photos and you post to social media, tap this little icon here, and I would change your photos from four, three to 16 by nine. That will show this sort of widescreen look. If you post online, it's perfect for things such as YouTube thumbnails and more. However, you can adjust this to square, maybe for Instagram or four, three, if you prefer that either way. You can have whatever works for you. I actually like the framing of 16 by nine, change this to whatever works for you. Also in the upper left, you'll see it says raw max. If we tap on this, press and hold, we can quickly change between those formats I showed you before. So we want to maybe have some space that's saved with this photo, change it to Heath and you're good to go there. 48 megapixel images. So make sure you have those enabled and that should help you out with those controls. Press and hold again. It's not quite as intuitive 
as before because you have to press and hold on a little icon and then it shows up but you have those options if you want them introduced with the iphone 14 pro models and carried over to the 15 pro models is the always on display i personally really like this but some people want to get the most battery life possible and if you do you may want to disable this while it doesn't take up a ton of power it can actually use additional power if you don't want it to have an always on display when you lock the screen you can actually disable this under your settings go down to display and brightness and then scroll down a little bit further and you'll see always on display tap on this and you can actually customize it whether or not you want to show a wallpaper notifications or just turn it off altogether then lock the phone and you just go to a black screen like you did before so I would customize this based on what you'd like. However, if you want to use that new feature for standby, where you can actually lock the screen while it's charging and have additional information on the screen, you'll want to leave always on display enabled because that actually uses the always on display to give you that information regularly while it's charging instead of just shutting off every time. And you can enable standby first. Let's do that. If you haven't already in your settings, go down to standby and then you can enable it. You've got display always on if you want that. And it says when always on is enabled, the display will intelligently turn off when not in use. You have night mode options, show notifications and show preview on tap only if maybe you're at work and you don't want everyone seeing those notifications. So once this is enabled in order for that to work, all you need to do is either plug it in and hold it horizontally, or you can use a stand. I have a MagSafe compatible stand here, but again, it only needs to be plugged in and charging. If I place my iPhone on it, go ahead and lock it. It will switch to a standby mode. We'll give it a second to switch on. And now we have standby that's fully customizable. You just press and hold and you can actually, once it's unlocked, customize it with widgets or whatever you'd like, or you can swipe through and go to photos or maybe just a clock. And there's multiple clocks available as well that are fully customizable. Just press and hold, and then you can customize them with this button here. So depending on which one you're in, depends on what customizations are available. So if I wanna switch the color, I can switch the background to whatever I'd like. Haptics on iPhone have always been great due to the Taptic engine built in. But if you miss the feeling of 3D touch where Apple used to use a pressure sensitive layer under the display, so when you press on an icon, it actually sensed how much pressure you were giving it and popped open a sub menu. If you wanna make this feel like that and a little bit faster, you can do that now under settings. Within settings, go down to accessibility and under accessibility, go to touch under touch. There's haptic touch. There's a new option for fast. I would enable this as it makes this much faster to open up. Now it's faster than it was before where default is just sort of slow and doesn't feel natural. So I would recommend switching that. Also, one other thing I would recommend is enabling this on the keyboard. If you haven't already, when you type, you can actually feel the presses when you type on the keyboard within notes. If I type this is a new note, you can actually feel each press. This is something that was added some time ago, but if you haven't enabled, I would try it out. Under your settings, go to sound and haptics, scroll down until you get to keyboard feedback. Under keyboard feedback, enable haptic. Once you do that, you'll actually have that haptic feedback as you're typing. Try it out, and if you don't like it, you can always disable it. Now, if you haven't had an iPhone for a couple years and you haven't had the dynamic Island, the dynamic Island is super helpful in that it actually is sort of an action or notification center that lets you know what's going on, but is non-intrusive. So if we go into the clock, maybe start a timer here, press start, swipe home. It goes into the dynamic Island, swipe to the right. It goes away, swipe back to the left and it comes back, press and hold, and you'll see the timer. You can interact with it or just tap on it and it goes directly into the app. It works really well and it's super helpful. The same thing works if maybe you're playing music and using a timer. So at the same time as we're playing music, you'll see it separates it. We can swipe again to switch between different ones. So it can go away, swipe back, swipe to the left and it goes away. So it's super helpful if you wanna jump back and forth. Again, press and hold, it brings you into your controls for music and more. So that's 15 different features or settings that you should know about your new iPhone with a few additional ones in general that go along with iOS 17 as well. Hopefully that helped you out. And if there's anything else that you have suggested for someone else, if you've just picked one of these up, let me know in the comments below. Again, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.